This interactive demo of Portfolio Management with CA Clarity PPM is the fourth of a comprehensive series of demonstrations presented by Digital Celerity, a premier CA Technologies partner and the leading provider of Clarity Consulting, Training and Expert Services. As the number one reseller of CA Clarity PPM in North America, Digital Celerity is delighted to share our knowledge, exchange ideas and build the CA Clarity PPM community. Hi Bill. Uh, thanks for joining me this afternoon and offering to show me the Clarity application as it relates to portfolio management. Just to set the scene for you uh, at the start of this demonstration, um, just to let you know, we, we've got a fairly complex organization. And uh, we do have an overall company strategy. And we, ha we use a balanced scorecard with five business objectives and multiple business units such as product development, uh, marketing, uh, sales, etc. And many of those projects are owned by one business unit but contribute to multiple company objectives. And they're actually of interest to a lot of the other business units because they're impacted by them. Now as a company, we have limited budgets and resources so can you show me how Clarity would help us in making those executive decisions on which projects we can take on and which ones we really shouldn't be doing? Sure, Chris. Um, Clarity supports portfolio planning. And a portfolio is a collection of projects. So in order to support uh, different business units and their business goals, what you would do in Clarity is create a portfolio for each business unit which would hold all the projects for that unit. Then once you have these portfolios, you can use them to prioritize, plan, to analyze, and track the projects for that business. Let me show you how that looks in Clarity. So here I am on the Clarity homepage. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a list of portfolios and show you that, that portfolio list. So what we have here is, is portfolios. Um, for the different business units. Um, and these portfolios then contain the projects for that business unit that can be used um, to manage, analyze, plan, and track those projects. But we're at a high level. We're just seeing some high level information about those portfolios. For example, business service. We can see who's portfolio manager. We can see the planning horizon for that portfolio. Very typical scenario is you have your portfolio for one year, which is your business plan. And you update it and check it regularly. Then you create another business, another uh, business portfolio for the next year, so it's kind of annual plans. And there's target budgets, and then there's metrics you can track on this portfolio in terms of how it's doing overall. So let's take a look at what's inside a portfolio. So I'm going to click on the business services portfolio, and this uh, contains all the pro potential projects, both approved, planned, and um, ideas for projects that uh, you, you, this business unit may want to take on for this year. So we start off with just some basic set of properties on the port portfolio. Um, and then you set, uh, in the content editor, you set what projects you want to see. For example, all projects belonging to this business unit. And that will be regularly synchronized so you're always up to date as the, as the projects undertaken by that business unit change during the course of the year. And then that gives you a list of projects. And here you can see all the projects that are part of this portfolio. And these projects can be a mix of um, projects that are already in flight, um, approved projects that haven't yet started, projects that have not yet been approved, and ideas which are potential projects that you want to consider. Um, and so all of these are, can be considered in one single portfolio at a time um, to see which ones are the most important to take on and which ones you can afford to take on, both in terms of your um, resource capacity and your budget. So we're seeing for, here for each pro, in project in the uh, portfolio some high level information about its schedule, how much it's going to cost, both uh, from a planned capital cost and from an operating expense cost, and also how much effort it's going to take here in terms of role demand. So those are the key constraints within a portfolio. And you have to figure out which projects you can take on given those um, constraint, portfolio constraints. Now the targets is in a portfolio is how you set basically the business unit budget. So for this business unit, you set um, your capital 
budget, your operating expense budget, which then also yields a total budget. Um, that's how much money you have to spend for the year on these projects. Um, and this can be distributed across the, the year as well. And you also have your effort. How many, how many people do you have to get this work done? Um, and so that also is, can be set here. And typically it's set based on the people within your organization, so it's automatically set. Um, and that gives you the constraints of how much work you can do um, within this portfolio. Um, and then you can change these over the, month, over, over the course of the year. If you plan to hire, say, um, in the middle of the year, you can go ahead and set higher values there to, to um, show that. You can also, right now you see we're just doing an overall resource role, um, capacity. You can also put in the key roles that tend to constrain your work. So for example, if, if developers or engineers are the key, typically the um, resource or type of resource that constrain um, how much work you can take on, you can actually include those roles specifically and then track capacity versus demand for the portfolio for those specific roles. So that's the target of the portfolio. And then we, and we looked at the project of the portfolio, portfolio. The next step is ranking and deciding which projects to take on given these constraints. So I'm going to click on the water line view here. And what this does is it gives us, gives us a, a view of the projects. And they are ranked. And then it also gives us a water line here above which are projects we think we can take on given priority and cost and um, uh, resource capacity budgets. And it shows you like everything above this line. It shows you um, whether I'm in the green for these, these constraints or whether I'm actually gone over and, and in the red. So for example, this currently is set for where plan cost is the uh, constraint. So it puts the water line right here where um, anything above this line I can do, anything below this line is going to put me in plan cost red. So that's gives you a high-level view, way of looking at and analyzing your portfolio and deciding which ones to take on. Um, to rank these, these portfolios, you can set ranking rules. For example, those with high alignment are higher, those with high risk are lower. Um, you can set those ranking rules and so the ranking will be done automatically for you. But then you can also you know, drag and drop to move things around. For example, maybe one of these is low priority based on the rules, but you know um, you know, the CEO says we've got to have this one, so that's going to be ranked higher. So go ahead and you can, you know, start off with a regular ranking, but then drag and drop to get those rankings um, that are really reflecting all aspects of, uh, of uh, prioritization. And you can also move the waterline above or below to reflect if you want more or less projects to try to take on. And then you'll see what that does. I've moved, included more projects, but that's made, you know, my co made me sort of exceed my cost and, uh, budgets and my resource capacity. So these are all the types of analysis you can do, analysis you can do to try to determine which projects you should take on uh, for your business unit in order to provide the most value to the business unit within the constraints uh, that you have. Okay, thanks, Bill. Um, so now I can see this logical view of all my projects by different portfolios um, of the projects we're undertaking and what we've got planned. But what happens when the business climate changes and we've got to adjust our priorities? How can we see uh, different sort of scenarios, what the impact of those is going to be, and how can we make those what-if choices? What if the business changes? What if I change something in my organization really to help me uh, come to those management decisions? Yeah, Clarity supports uh, planning scenarios where you can do that kind of what-if planning. Um, and this, these planning scenarios allow you to create alternate plans and then do what-if analysis to find the right plan for the situation. And you can compare and contrast those plans and finally decide which is the one you want to put into execution. It's all done in a what-if mode. So you might say, well, what if we approve this project? Or what if we delay this project? Or what if we hire more engineers? Without actually changing any of the real project or resource information clarity, it's all done in a a scenario what if mode. So it allows you to basically play with um, the options and come up with different plans in search of the right one um, for the situation. So let me show you how that's done. Within this portfolio of business services, um, we have a, a plans tab. And this is where you can create alternate plans um, or scenarios to do your what if planning. So I'll go ahead and create a new plan. Let's, let's call this uh, increase budget by 
Um, and so we're going to see if we get more money, what does that mean in terms of taking on more projects, um, etc. So I'm going to save the um, the, uh, uh, the 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 scenario plan. And what you see initially, what we have is all of the constraints are still the same from the portfolio, same operating costs, uh, same you know, resource capacity. But if we re if we increase this this budget, then we'll take our planned capital costs from 500,000 to 550,000. Um, we'll create our uh, planned operating costs from 2 million to 2.2 million, um, and uh, you know we'll leave our resource capacity the same. So we can make we basically we're adjusting the constraints um, on this plan for this portfolio to see well what room does that give us now in terms of our um, our what if planning. So once I created this uh, ultimate plan, increased budget by 10 percent, I can go back into this waterline view. And I can choose the plan of increased budget by 10 percent. So let's go ahead and take a look at this budget. And here's where I can start doing some what-if analysis. So for example, you might say something like, um, you know, what if we did not approve um, the HR self-service program? You know, what if we did not approve that? And again, that's a, um, not going to change the project at all. But it does change it within a scenario as a what-if plan. So what does that do to it? Um, we can delay um, start date. So what if we changed it from February to October? We save those. Um, and you, you see what happens is this, it moves out um, on the schedule. And what that will do means what that means is then you'll spend less money and less resource effort earlier in the year until you can get more projects done. So you can start adjusting your what if planning along those lines. You can delay projects, you can unapprove projects, you can approve projects, you can change your resource capacity, all of which give you different ways of analyzing different options for, um, for the ultimate plan. Um, another tab important here that's important here is the capacity tab. This is where it lets you go a little more deeper into resource capacity planning. So rather than just looking at a single number, you can look at um, all the projects that are above the waterline and what their capacity is or their effort is, how much effort, resource effort they need. And you can see capacity and demand here on a month-by-month -month basis and see where it's exceeded. So you actually have enough resources here in the early months to get the work done. But starting July, you go through four months where you have too, much, um, too many projects to get the work done. So again, that's something where you may do, well, what if we increased our um, our workforce to get this done, or what if we delayed a project which started instead of in July, it started in November, and so move some of that resource demand out. And this gives you the, the uh, information you need to do that analysis and figure out your, your plan. Um, one last tab I'll show you um, within the water planning is financials. So this again, like capacity, is a more detailed look at cost. So now we're breaking it down by, again, the individual projects. We're breaking it down on a month-by-month -month basis see where this adds up. Um, and again, here it looks like we're actually within our, uh, our cost constraints, um, which is good. But if, um, if there were issues here, it would show you where that breaks down. And again, give you information you need to do the, the what-if analysis to come up with a plan that's going to fit within the constraints. Great. Thanks, Bill. So that, uh, that really does show me how I can use those portfolios and do some what-if analysis on them. Um, but when I've done that what-if analysis, you know, what sort of uh, reporting or dashboards are actually available for me to communicate the status of a portfolio um, to executive management and to the board? Sure. Clarity has, Clarity has quite a few built-in uh, dashboards and reports uh, to communicate portfolios. So I'll take you to uh, the portfolio dashboard view, and that will let you uh, see um, kind of some of the out-of-the-box dashboards that do a good job of reporting on these portfolios. So what we're seeing here is um, there's a series of dashboards across the top. So each tab represents a dashboard. In this case, what we're first looking at is the cost uh, benefit um, of the portfolio. So within these given portfolios for these business units, I'm looking across the six portfolios, and I see a very high level. How are we doing um, you know, cost, plan cost versus uh, 
benefits versus um, budgeted costs across these portfolios, across these different business units. I can look down on the list here to see more you know, overall health and risk of the units and overall cost and uh, variance between budget and cost. And same with the benefits. So it gives me a nice overview of the portfolio, different portfolios of the business, of the business units. There's quite a few other uh, dashboards here too. This next one, rolls, has to do with the same view, except it's now concentrating on resource capacity versus demand. Where do I have, you know, say more demand than capacity? You can see in business technologies, the demand that the projects have for resources exceeds that business unit's capacity. Uh, resource capacity. So that's an indication that you're going to need to you know, deal with that situation. So it gives, again, that high level information on the different portfolios of the business unit for resource capacity and demand. Um, and for example, the goal analysis, uh, the next one of the other tabs in here gives a nice look at overall how you're doing on your overall goals for your project. So for example, um, your organization may have goals such as cost avoidance, cost reduction, grow the business, maintain the business, infrastructure improvement. This tells you, well, how much time and effort and money am I spending on all these? So it says, how many projects are there in each of these goals? It says, how much am I spending in each of, on projects for each of these goals? How much resource effort am I spending on each of these goals? And it also gives you some um, you know, present value of each of the, these portfolios by these goals. So it gives you a real goal-oriented view of your uh, projects as well. I'll show you one last example of a, of a dashboard, the capital and operating expense. What this does is looks at your portfolios across your overall um, cost and your capital and uh, versus expense cost. So it's showing all of these within this graph for these different business units. And again, the, the list will show you more details of exactly with what the business units are spending in terms of you know, budgeted costs versus planned costs versus and variance of those broken down by overall cost and capital versus operating expense. So those are just some of the examples um, of, the, of the reporting tools we have on portfolios. That's great. Thanks, Bill. So I can see how now, provided we have the information at the project level, that could roll up into multiple portfolios for what is analysis, that logical view. Um, and management um, decision making. So, if we wanted to look at the, you know, the maturity and adoption of the processes and tools for, that we have for portfolio management, and any other disciplines such as resource management, finance, program, or project management, would you be able to help us look at that? Sure thing. We have a, uh, a PPM maturity and roadmap assessment. And what that does is it allows you to quickly find out where your strengths and weaknesses are, um, where your priorities are to address um, those areas, and then um, set out a roadmap of, of when and how to, to mature your organization in the areas that are most important to you. So that's uh, called our PPM Maturity and Roadmap Assessment. And it will take you through each of the different types of um, project and portfolio management areas that you're talking about. Great. Thank you, Bill. So um, I'm, that was very useful. I'm looking forward to seeing some of the other capabilities of Clarity and some of the follow-up demonstrations. So thank you again. My pleasure. Digital Celerity, guiding your best path to BPM, ITSM, and enterprise agile best practices.